Hi guys, and welcome to New Vegas Mod Organizer, part three. Now, so far I've shown you how to get Mod Organizer installed and set up for Fallout New Vegas, and to start installing some of what I consider the basic and essential mods, especially focused around the user interface, MCM, Darnified UI, that type of thing. Basically, I now have what I call a base profile. And what I'm going to do in this video is create a new profile, a profile that I'm actually going to use as a playable profile, and it's going to be for my character, Jack. And I'm gonna start installing all of the mods I need for that character. Now, this is a somewhat long process, and it's going to actually span two videos. In this video, I'm going to show you the setting up of the profile itself, and the installation of an essential mod for me, Project Nevada, and one of its related mods, Project Nevada Extra Options. If you want the full rundown on what profiles are for Mod Organizer and why they are so very useful, you should go and check the video I did devoted to that. It is for Skyrim, but everything in there is pretty much applicable to Fallout New Vegas and any other game, actually. But for me, I'm going to create a profile for my current playthrough, which is with a character called Jack. And to do this, I'm going to go along to this drop-down menu and click Manage. And I'm going to take the base profile and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to call it Jack. This is my new profile. Um, I select it. I have got automatic archive invalidation left. And, well, I'm going to close it for now. And I'm going to select it. And as you can see, it is identical to my base profile. Now, I've also decided I'm going to use local saves for this profile. So I'm going to select this option. This will mean from now on, if I close this and look at the saves, I have no saves, which obviously will be a problem. If I look at the base folder, here are all the saves I have. These are the saves that are global. They're in the normal place. These are the saves that I've got for this profile, which is currently none. So obviously that's not useful. So I'm going to go back to managing that profile, make sure I've selected Jack with his local save games, and I'm going to hit transfer saves. This might take a few seconds, depending on how many saves you've got, and you will see a list of the characters that you have. In this case, I only have one playthrough, that's Jack. If you've done multiple playthroughs and still have the saves for those different characters, they will appear here. And selecting this Jack option will show me all of the saves for that character. If I had other characters, obviously it would filter them by that particular character. Now I could move all of these saves to the new local profile, but I'm actually going to copy them. That way there, there is a sort of a backup copy over in the base profiles. And obviously I probably need some save games in the base profiles just to test them out. So it's a good idea in this case to copy them. Copy all save games of character Jack to the profile. Be warned, it could take some time. Those save games are pretty large and uh, you could have a lot of them. Unfortunately, you can't pick which saves you're transferring across. You have to transfer all of them. So I'm afraid it is a sort of all or nothing process. If you do it via this tool, there is another way of doing it. If I click done and close, now you can see these saves here. If I go along to my Fallout New Vegas folder and the mod organizer folder within, Go to Profiles, Jack, and Saves. It actually gives me all of the saves. And what I could have done is opened up the Global Save folder, which is usually found under Documents, My Games, Fallout New Vegas, Saves, and I could select specific saves that I want, and I could copy them right into this Jack Saves folder. What I can do now is I could actually go through this and do a little pruning. So, for example, some of the early saves, perhaps I don't need them anymore. Just so I, I have slightly less bloat in my folder. So, for example, if I keep 
those saves. That's the ones from my latest Let's Play chapter, the one in uh, the Dead Money DLC. And I'll keep a few of the saves beforehand so I can go backwards and forwards and test things. Obviously, because I copied these, I haven't just deleted any of the backup saves. I still have all of those saves in my global folder. And of course, you can delete saves in this particular panel. So a lot of these saves here are auto saves. So I'm going to select those three and delete those three saves. They are auto saves. Uh, that is a, that is that is an auto save made by the game. If you're wondering what the ones marked profile are, they are auto saves made by a mod that I use to do auto saving. So if I delete those, I'm only going to keep the saves that I manually made. Again, because I'm deleting these, it doesn't mean I've lost the copies forever. If I go back to the base folder, you can see these saves are still here. So even though I've deleted the local versions under my Jack profile, I actually still have the originals in the global area. So another good advantage for using different profiles. So I now have my new profile. This is the one I'm going to install all of my essential mods. Well, all of the mods I need for my Jack Let's Play. And as you can see, I'm getting a helpful little message telling me I've got some missing ESPs. This is actually going to be very useful in fixing my load order. It's going to allow me to add the mods and re-enable them and make sure that I don't miss anything. But another list that's going to be useful is the plugins list from my original load order. If you go along to users, in my case, go for app data local Fallout New Vegas, you find your plugins.txt, which on a clean version of Fallout New Vegas, an unmodded version, will look something like this. I wonder why I've got Fallout New Vegas ESM twice. I will check that out. If I go along to the backup I made, I made a backup of all of these and view the plugins text. You can see the full list again. <laughs> ah well, you can see the full list of plugins that I actually had. Now the reason that is also useful on top of this missing ESP list is at the end I'm going to look at my plugin list once I finished with Mod Organizer and compare it to the plugin list that I used in Nexus Mod Manager, not to see if there are any missing ESPs, but just to make sure I haven't added any new ones, or at least make myself aware of any new ones just to check if I actually need them. So it is still a good idea to keep a backup of that list, even though this tool shows you the missing ESPs. Of course, that does make me think perhaps a nice new feature for Mod Organizer would be a list of all of the new ESPs. So when you look at a save, it tells you this save was made with ESPs, these are the ones you, you are missing from that list, but we have also noticed you have some new ESPs. You've installed a few new mods that were not present when this save was created. That would actually be pretty useful as well. But there you have it. I now have my new profile with its local saves and all the base mods. It is time to transfer my old load order over to Mod Organizer. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to transfer all of the old mods over to Mod Organizer? Well, we're going to do it the exact same way we did it for Skyrim. And if you want to go and see how I did that, I will leave a link here. You can go and watch that video. But basically what I'm going to be looking at is the drive where I have all my mods stored for Nexus Mod Manager. It would be here, Fallout New Vegas, and then mods. And these are all I don't think I need any of these. No, these are the partials. What I am looking for are all of the non-folders, all of these archives. I'm going to select all of them. Now, a couple of choices here. I could copy them, therefore have a total, totally new copy of all of the mods from Nexus Mod Manager in Mod Organizer. That would take quite some time. Or I could control X or cut them and go along back to the 
drive mod organizer Fallout New Vegas downloads. This is where I have specified um, that I will be downloading any mods with mod organizer. Right click and paste. Now, some of these mods I've already downloaded again. I can probably skip those. In fact, I'm going to skip those. The advantage to this, of course, was it took no time whatsoever and it added all of the new mods. If I go back to the Nexus Mod Manager downloads, you will see there are a few that have been left behind, but not many actually. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the download section for Mod Organizer. And as you can see, we now have a long list of mods. Be warned, do not right click and delete from here unless you really do want to get rid of the mod because that will get rid of one of the files you just copied across. It actually deletes the physical file. As you can see, Mod Organizer has got a great big warning symbol. It basically does not know any information about this mod. Information missing, please select query info from the context menu to re-retrieve. Um, if you want the full details of what this entails, again, go along to the Skyrim version of this video. I'll leave a link here again. And it will, it will give you all of the details, including how to set it and how to undo it if you set it incorrectly. Because if you do set it incorrectly, you could have some issues. You'll get the full details from that video. But the quick version, I'm going to right click, query info. I know it's 38454, that is the Nexus ID for the Armour Dusted mod. I'm going to select that and it, okay, it's right, got two files. One that gives the locations and console command spoilers for that mod and one that's the actual file for the mod. It is, of course, the file for that mod. And now I have this mod with all of the information and can now install it. Um, and it will, of course, give me the suggested name. I'm going to cancel that. And of course, I've got to do this with all of these mods, which will take me some time. And finally, we're done. I now have most of my mods copied across and information relevant to them added. There is the odd mod that refuses to connect or, well, because some of them can no longer be found, for example, and because some of them do not actually exist on Nexus. But for the most part, I've got them all finished. Of course, I still need to install the mods, and I'm going to start with the most popular mod for Fallout New Vegas, Project Nevada. Now, make sure my profile is set to the correct one, Jack, and double-click the mod. Now, Project Nevada has a scripted installer, which should work perfectly fine now. It will take a few seconds to start up. This, this is one of the mods that takes probably the longest to bring up its menu. Once this menu comes up, leave all the modules selected, if you want all the modules, I do, and click Install. Now, this is pretty important. It is telling me that, as well, I'll read it. Your installed MCM files are already newer than the one included with Project Nevada. Would you like to keep the newer ones recommended? Project Nevada comes with its own light version of MCM. It's a version of MCM that will only show the Project Nevada options. Obviously, I do not need this because I have the full version of mod configuration installed, and it is recommended that I click yes, that I keep the existing ones, keep the ones from the mod configuration menu. Now, if you're following along with me, don't follow the next few steps because I'm going to show you what happens if you click no. The mod has now been installed. I'm going to select it and I'm going to double click it and look at conflicts. And you'll notice a lot of conflicts with the MCM. Now, if I go into game and I press escape to go to the menu, I will get this error message. The mod configuration menu has detected an unexpected version of the menu files. You will need to reinstall MCM, overwriting any existing files. Basically, uh, there's a problem. So, now, I could actually fix this problem by simply taking Project Nevada and placing it above the mod configuration menu. Then, it would not actually overwrite these files and the menu would work just fine. However, the, the disadvantage there is 
you must make sure Project Nevada is always in the correct position with regards to the mod configuration menu. It does come with one advantage though. It does mean that if I decide to remove the mod configuration menu for some reason, perhaps I decide I don't need it for, you know, if I don't have any other mods that use it, Project Nevada will still work. Because it comes with its own version of MCM, it will continue to work. However, I cannot for the life of me imagine why you would have Project Nevada with its own mod configuration menu installed and not have the full version of the mod anyway because there are so many mods that require it. If you've installed this mod, honestly, you don't need the MCM that comes with Project Nevada. And this is one of these mods I cannot imagine you ever uninstalling. I really honestly cannot recommend doing it this way. So I'm going to remove that mod and I'm going to reinstall it the correct way this time. Once again, hit install. Would you like to keep the newer ones recommended? Yes. Let it do its thing. And once it's finished, select the mod. If I now double click it, look at conflict, a lot less. It is still overwriting one file, but do not worry about it. Let's check this in game. Press escape. Mod configuration menu showing up just fine, along with the new Project Nevada core options and the rebalance options. However, there is one problem still. You see the, uh, the new icon? Look down bottom right hand side, you will see the condition meter and you will see the ammo count. And right next to it is a grenade icon. That is the current grenade, I grenade I have selected. And as you can see, I can rotate through the uh, selected grenades with a hotkey. Very, very useful. However, when I put my weapon away, the ammo and condition will disappear, but the grenade won't. It will remain there and it's supposed to disappear along with the ammo, if you've installed one hood, but it didn't. And the reason for this, if you remember the last video, I told you one hood had to come below mods that it controlled, and Project Nevada is one such mod, so one hood needs to come below it. If I start my game now, and put my weapon away, this time the grenade icon disappears. Now the next thing I'm going to install is actually the Project Nevada Extra Options mod, which uh, many people have had some issues with with Mod Organizer. And I suspect the reason people have had issues with it is they've double clicked, they've got their nice little script, and they've seen core, cyberware, equipment, rebalance and DLC and decided that they also want the equipment module. This is currently a work in progress. They hit install and they get this. Files, meshes, characters couldn't be extracted. Probably means the mod is broken though you still may get partial functionality. And then you click okay and then okay and then okay and okay. And it would seem there is a problem with the installer. Perhaps it's a missing file, perhaps it's the fact that those particular meshes are not loose files. They are actually part of the, um, the BSAs and you end up dragging that aside and hitting force close, confirm, which will kill off the process. You don't have the mod installed. Now, what you probably don't realize is the same problem occurs in Nexus Mod Manager. It's just Nexus Mod Manager doesn't show you the warning. It ignores it and carries on regardless. So when you're installing Project Nevada Extra Options, what you want to do is leave this unselected. Hit Install, let it do its thing, and then select it. Okay guys, well that is where I'm going to leave it for this video. Obviously I have a lot more mods to install and I'm going to show you how I do that in part 4. I'll also be further expanding on the concept of the conflicts and priorities, so if that is of interest to you, you are more than welcome to join me for that video. I look forward to seeing you there and until then, remember as always, have fun. In that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh Lily Bell, oh Lily Bell, oh Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell.
Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never...